the life. Yep, there we yeah. go. All right, guys, Prosperity Inner Circle. It's my absolute pleasure to be back here today with phenomenal speaker on the Thursday. We missed you guys, but as every single week, as we promise, we bring phenomenal people, extraordinary entrepreneurs, people that are game changers and inspiring a community for better performance. So it's my absolute pleasure to introduce you today to a industry colleague, Michelle Ginn. And it's my absolute pleasure to have her on the show today to talk about my favorite topic, high performance and habits. Michelle, welcome to the Entrepreneur Speaker Series. It's a pleasure to have you here. How are you, do How are you doing today? I am fantastic. And I really, really appreciate you having me, giving me the opportunity to be on your show today. It's, it's just so amazing. Whenever I get a chance to get out in front of, you know, different groups and group, different audiences. So I really, really appreciate you and, and everyone that's on today and, and watching, of course. Absolutely. It's our pleasure, Michelle, as you know. Um, Michelle, for the people that have not had yet an opportunity to get introduced to you or see some of your work and the things that you do, would you mind telling us a little bit um, where you're from, where you're currently residing, and a little bit of your uh, your background, just so uh, so we can give a proper introduction to the audience watching right now. Certainly, yeah. So I'm here in Maryland. We're about uh, 45 minutes outside of Washington, D.C. So born and raised Baltimore girl. Baltimore. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. And um, so I spent about 30, almost 30 years in corporate America, working for various Fortune 500 companies. And uh, that's my background. I don't really didn't come from an entrepreneurial background. So uh, so that's kind of where I came from. And um, I mean, I can definitely go more into that. Or if you had other questions for me, I can, you know, kind of tell my story and, and kind of where where I'm where I came from and where I had yeah. Well, I think what we would love to know, um, Michelle, and, and, and we have a lot of people from all walks of life, but the one thing that we all have in common within these communities is that we're thinking or wanting to get into entrepreneurship or if you're currently in entrepreneurship and you have a business, right? We're always looking to scale and reach that next level through the journeys and the stories from the amazing speakers that, uh, that come on our show here. So I think that uh, one question that I have for you, you said 35 years in corporate America. That's a very, very long time. So can you talk to us a little bit, maybe go back all the way when you just started your career, maybe coming fresh out of college, um, what inspired you to, to start your career in corporate America? What, what was the drive to, to get a job and, and to, to, to work your way up um, inside the working landscape? Yeah, sure. So um, I actually did not go to college right out of high school. I went to a four-year uh, Catholic high school. And of course, the whole point of those schools is to teach you and prepare you to go to college. And honestly, I had no aspirations to go to college. So um, at the time, I did what I thought was the next best thing. And I went out and I got married and I had my first child. <laughs> So I had my first son when I was 19, uh, just a year out of high school and uh, had my, I, I actually started in corporate America back at uh, AT&T at the time and worked there for a while. And then I had my second son three years later and uh, six months later was divorced. <laughs> so I spent the next 10 years as a single mom. And if anyone has ever been in that position, you know you have to do whatever it takes to provide for your family, provide for your children. And so I always had a strong work ethic uh, instilled, to be, instilled to me by my mom. And so I did everything that I knew how to and just excelled in every job that I had taken. So at one point I got a job at MCI, if you remember the old long distance company. Yeah. And uh, I actually worked with them for 18 years. Wow. So um, all total in my career and was able to, you know, work myself up in the different um, 
in the different positions that I got involved in. And again, that work ethic just kept me going. And so I spent a very long time knowing that I had to provide for my family and I had to do everything that it would take to make sure that you know my bills were paid and everybody was fed. Now, I didn't do everything right at the time. Of course, mm -hmm. when you're young, you don't always make yeah. the right the best choices. Yeah. So, I filed bankruptcy. I, you know, did all that crazy financial stuff you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> um, but it was what I knew and at the time it was the best decision I could make. So, um, you know, I really kind of went up and then went back down and then built myself back up and uh, really relied on that job to make sure that that my family was cared for. And wow. since then, I've married an amazing man. I know some of you know him as Patrick Gwynn. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've been thriving together. We now have four children together. And so that's, you know, where really where my corporate um, journey goes. And it kind of ended back in 2018. And it was a series of events. I think there wasn't one aha moment that was just like, you got to get out of here. I think it was a long time coming. And it was just a feeling that I didn't belong there. I had no desire to spend the next 20 or 30 years of my life sitting in that corporate cubicle. And I was at a point where I didn't care. I didn't care about the job I was doing. I didn't care, care about the people I was working with, the company I was working for. And that's not a good way. It's not a good place to be. No. You, you really don't want to be in a position where you're spending eight, nine hours a day active in a role that you don't care about. Yeah. And with that culmination, plus my... I, I don't want to say guilt, but you could say guilt a little bit of not being able to be there in certain situations for my daughter, who is, she's now 15, but at the time was a little younger. And so just everything kind of built up. And then I just was like, something has to change. There has to be something else. I have to find a way to get my freedom, to, to get back home to where I can be there for my family when needed. I can take time off when I want to. And um, so that's that's kind of where's my transition and point. And then in, um, in 2018, I unfortunately, I lost my mom. She had gotten lung cancer. And um, that was really, really hard. It was a really hard point in my life. Yeah, I, I imagine. Yeah. And, um, even just talking about it, yeah. but it's, um, it was the point in my life and I had already just started to make these tiny transitions and my, my mind was opened. My mind was open to other things. And it was that point in time where I was like, what, you know, what the hell are, am I doing? What, what is this life really all about? And I can't continue on this path that I'm on. Something has to change. And so it was at that time and Patrick and I talked about it and agreed that it was time for me to make a change. And wow. uh, that's when I jumped out of corporate I have my picture with my truck and my box on my last day of work. And I uh, haven't looked back since. <laughs> wow. Well, I, first and foremost, Michelle, what an incredible uh, journey. And I, I think that um, I'm sure that the people watching this right now, it's, it's, it's like a true heartfelt message right here. The journey that you have gone through, starting from a uh, single mother, right, with a very young child still having to work a job uh, where you felt very unfulfilled and I imagine demotivated every day because you were not living your purpose. You were doing something just to pay for the bills. So I think uh, my next question, what I'm curious about, Michelle, because it sounds to me that you have you 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 realized long time ago that the job was really not fulfilling you, and you knew that it was probably not meant for you. It was something temporarily. But what caused enough pain or frustration for you to finally pull the trigger? Because so 
you know, in my coaching practice, and I speak to a lot of people and I hear this all the time, they say, I, I actually realize, right? I realize that I'm not fulfilled. I'm not happy where I am, but I don't really know what is the journey ahead. I don't know what it looks like. And therefore they're kind of stuck in limbo. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They, they're right there in the middle with one foot into the situation that they're really unhappy with. But then there's that other foot towards freedom that they don't really know what it looks like. So they stay stuck in the middle. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Like what was that transition and what really caused the trigger for you to say enough is enough? So it's, um, you know, it's that comfort zone. And, and you touched on that with what you said, if people get that, they, they kind of don't want to move forward, but they're not happy. And um, I had to step way out of my comfort zone. Actually, honestly, I'm a quiet introvert. And um, when I when I first started looking into uh, other opportunities outside of my corporate career, it scared the crap out of me because I was OK. So I started in network marketing. So in network marketing, you have to talk with people. <laughs> and I literally and I know this was my own um, my own thinking and my own. I like to call them inner gremlins. We talked about that before. Yeah. yeah. But my own negative self-talk was, okay, I don't know how to talk with people. I literally have nothing to say. Like, I just, I'm not a good communicator. This is what I thought at the time, right? So it scared me. And so I started looking for ways, how can I learn? How can I learn to talk with people? And I literally hired a coach that gave me scripts mm, Okay, I see how to, how to talk with people and how to communicate. And it's funny because that was kind of the first thing that really started opening me up. And then that coach um, also recommended that I read a book, at, and if you've heard it of it or not, um, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. I haven't read it yet, but I, I, I mean, the subconscious mind is in general a great starting point, right? To learn about your own thought patterns. Yes, yes. So reading that book, it really opened my eyes, one, to a personal development world that I never knew anything about previously, mm -hmm. and two, to the thought that my thinking is a habit. And like every other habit, good or bad, you can change them. And so I always thought, well, this is just who I am. But that book opened my eyes to the fact that it doesn't have to be like I can change that thinking that's going on in my head and I can change who I am. And so that really started my journey and my personal development journey. And I think because you talked about a pain point. And again, I don't know that I can pinpoint one exact point in my life. I just feel like I was open at that point. I was open to the journey. I was open to learning and I was open to getting outside of my comfort zone to move out. And hey, Michelle, and did, did you know, because you, you, you said something very interesting there, like you didn't have all the answers yet. It was just a feeling at that point. Am I right? Yes, yes. So it's a feeling that you're carrying inside, like a hinge, like your body is kind of signaling you that it's, this is not the right place, but you didn't have all the answers yet. And you certainly, it sounds to me that you certainly didn't have a clear vision of what that next step would look like. So, so, so how did you go in when you finally, you said you have the picture of the last day where you packed your last stuff from, from your table and you left that, that horrible cubicle that you had spent so many years, um, what were you thinking at that moment? And and I see some people in the audience here are saying, I know how hard it is. We, ha we have some people that actually went through that same journey, transitioning from a job to entrepreneurship. Um, so what was going through your mind when you eventually took the decision and said, I'm going to go for it. And you left that building. Maybe talk to us a little bit. And you probably remember that feeling. I mean, it was... <laughs> It was scary for sure, but I was so excited and so happy that that was my last day. Like just knowing that I would never have to do that commute again, just knowing that I would not have to step back into that office space or that cubicle. I was just 
so excited. And I think that's what carried me beyond any sort of fear or anxiety. Just, and you know, I've always been such a positive person. So I don't, I don't allow myself to think about all the bad things. I just kind of face them as they come. Yeah. So um, I don't overwhelm myself with, oh my God, well, what's this or what's going to happen if that? I don't think that way. Right. So um, it just, I just remember that feeling of excitement and just being so happy just to be out of there. <laughs> like, so there was never a thought in my mind that I was not making the right choice. That, you know, and, and that to me, uh, Michelle, that is right here. That's the definition of, of entrepreneurship. And I always love to use an analogy in, 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 my, in my business when I'm coaching and mentoring people. Um, I say entrepreneurs, to me, the definition, we jump out of an airplane and we will build the parachute on our way down. And what that represents is we don't always have the answers, but you have belief in yourself and your own abilities to be resourceful, to figure it out, to find the people that can help you move forward. But sometimes you don't have the answers, but you just have to go after that feeling your intuition, right? It's meant to guide you. So to me, that's it's it's a very, very interesting to hear you say all these things. And I think that we we can truly relate to the journey and the transition that you made. Um, so so I think I think it would be interesting to to talk a little bit about you. You touched on the habits, right? You started uh, and, and by the way, what is the name of the book? Some people are wondering what is the book that you read? Yeah, so I published a book. It's called Get in the Habit, and it's a 30-day guided journal. Yes, and, and but I think before you mentioned, there was one. Oh, oh the name of the book. Science oh, yeah. That yeah, the name of the book. Um, it's The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, and it's uh, Dr. Joseph Murphy. Okay, it. yeah. It's a very I, small book, so it's an easy read, but I highly, highly recommend it. Excellent. I think our team will take notes for the people who might be interested in, in reading that book. <laughs> Um, so, so you touched upon habits, you started analyzing your own thinking. What is it that you discovered in that journey? So I was actually also at the time, um, facing, I faced a lot of anxiety and, um, of course I talk about, I don't have fears, but yes, I had fears and it's, it had to do with certain like everyday things that I was just feeling anxious about and having anxiety. And when I read that book and it talked about the power of your thoughts, it really helped me to change that thinking and discover that every time a certain situation that I would start to get anxious about, my mind would start thinking the same things. And so what I had to do was switch that as soon as I, I as soon as I acknowledged that I was starting to have those thoughts, I would switch them out and with different thoughts, more positive thoughts. And it really started to help to change that thinking. Like today, I don't have that anxiety anymore. So, um, so that really helped me to understand that the way that we think or the way that we've thought our whole lives is not necessarily the truth. And it's our perception of things. And so once you recognize that and you can acknowledge it, then you can start to change that thinking into the more positive space and um, take that habitual thinking that you've had all your life and change it. Like you don't have to continue to be that person. Beautiful. I love that. And I think this is very, very powerful here because what you're saying is that we're actually in control of our own thoughts. Yes. So it's almost like you have to separate your true self from your thoughts, from, from the mind, that, that little voice, I think everybody can relate to that, that little voice, you, you may have that little guy on your left shoulder and that little guy on your right shoulder and both, they have these, these uh, inner dialogues inside your mind. But what you're saying is that you're, you can be in control of your thinking if you choose to be. Yeah, I mean, your, your thoughts are the only things that you can truly control in your whole life. So if you're not in control of your thinking, then your life is out of control. So once you acknowledge that and you can realize the way that you're talking to yourself and start to make changes and change that thinking pattern, 
then your whole life is going to change. And another thing that I realized also reading that book and, and the more research that I've done and the more that I've listened um, over the last few years is that our thoughts are so powerful that the things that we think about, we actually attract into our whole, into our own lives and people don't realize that. So if you're constantly thinking about the negative or thinking about the things that you don't want to happen, like it or not, you're going to start attracting those things. You just attract those negative things into your life. So what we really have to do is you have to think positively. You have to think about the things that you do want in your life. And then reversely, you'll start to attract those positive things into your life. That's so amazing. Your thoughts are so powerful. I mean, it's thoughts can make you sick. Thoughts can make you anxious, make you fearful. And if you change that thinking up, you'll be amazed at how your life will change. Incredible. I think there's a lot of people right now on the spot, just by listening to this, to, they're changing their thoughts right now, just okay. by listening to this interview. Um, so, so Michelle, let's let's talk a little bit fast forward, right? Because you you went through your journey where you left the corporate corporate America. You took that plunge, that leap of faith, knowing that there there's something out there that is going to be serving you better. It's going to make you feel better. And then you you went into the the study of the the neuropsychology, understanding your own thinking patterns. Now. Fast forward today, you run a coaching practice, right? You're, you're a speaker. You, you just mentioned you published a, uh, a planner, phenomenal tool, right, for high performance uh, and habit tracking. Talk to us a little bit about that transition. What led you ultimately to discover that you could be an entrepreneur and that this subject, the subject of habits, the subject of daily rituals can lead to high performance? Yeah, so... Shortly after uh, I left my job, we attended a, uh, a Tony Robbins seminar, actually. And in that seminar, we bought several packages, um, you know, to attend more uh -huh. training. Yeah. One of them was a real estate one. And one of them was uh, what was called the Millionaire Mind Intensive. So had no idea what that one was about. We're just like, okay, we've got this thing coming up this weekend and I don't know. They're going to teach us how to be millionaires or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, driving to Virginia, I have no idea I'm going to this thing. Okay. So life changing. That was a life changing event for both of us, both Patrick and I, but we not only went to that and that also talks deeply about your mindset, especially your mindset towards money. Yeah. So that was, that was the premise to that. But then with that, we bought an, a greater package where we went to other subsequent seminars. So attending these seminars, I got into a group of people. Now I have a community, right? Which is so important. Yeah. And one of the seminars that was part of that group was called train the trainer. And I honestly didn't even want to go to that one. And I told Patrick, I said, well, you should go to that because I'm not doing this. I'm not going to speak on stage. I'm not doing anything like that. So that was a five day event, intense seminar event. And by the time we left there, I'm like, oh, I'm doing this. I'm going to get up on stage. I'm going to be a speaker. I'm going to build, you know. We're all fired up. Oh, yeah. I was ready to go. <laughs> so. Um, you know, just a sequence of events that came with that, those seminars, the people I've met by attending those seminars. And um, after shortly after that, I met another gentleman um, by the name of Bill Walsh, who does small business training. And yeah. he also has, we, I think, we you had Bill on the show here. Yeah, as well. you had him on your show. So he does his Rainmaker program, which is amazing, which I've attended several times already. And he also has a platinum speaker camp, which I attended. And that really gave me the basis of how to do your talks and, you know, the all the nuts and bolts of how to set that yeah. up and how to build a speaking business and how to set your coaching business up. So um, from there, I signed up with him. Now I'm on his Inspiration 2020 tour, which was meant to go all through this year. Obviously, we're on hold. Yeah. but. Um, 
that's okay. It's, 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 it'll come in its own time. And I was able to then, you know, build my coaching business. So that's where kind of that spark was just initially just a spark. And now it's become a passion for me to get out there. Like I want to help people and I want to be in a position where I can affect people's lives the way that my life has been affected by speakers and trainers and coaches and, um, you know, everybody else that I've invested in to be a part of my journey. And now I want to give back and offer that to others as well. What a, what an inspiring story, uh, Michelle. And you know what, what I want really our audiences to take away from this, because this happens so often, Michelle, I mean, we're, we're both coaches here and work with a lot of people. And I see it time and time again, um, when, when people approach me to, to work with them, they are scared to take that leap of faith because they don't have the answer yet. And I personally start to believe that we're almost conditioned by society, by our school systems, especially if you went through the corporate route like you did, you're being conditioned to always be told what to do. So all of a sudden, when you're thinking about entrepreneurship, you have to be the one that is resourceful. You have to leverage your own creativity, creative thinking. You have to build systems and processes. And I think that that's what freaks people out, right? They don't know how to do it. So that's that's when they stay stuck somewhere in the middle thinking about that, yet not pulling the trigger and moving forward. And what I find inspiring and what I hope that the people are seeing today on the call is you didn't have the pieces together either. You just take the decision and you start looking for people that could guide you, right? You started with Tony Robbins and Tony Robbins led into another and you met Bill Walsh, which, which is a phenomenal trainer. Um, so so I, I want people to see that you don't always need to have all the answers, but you will run into people that will show you the pieces because what you think about expands, what you focus on expands, right? It's, it's where your energy goes and yeah. all of a sudden those bits and pieces start to appear. Absolutely. And, you know, I like to say, you know, people, whatever your spiritual belief is, is God or the universe or whatever. But I like to say the universe is going to give you what you need at the time when you need it. And so you can't always anticipate that you're going to have all the answers. But you know what? The answers will come once you start focusing on that something and taking action. Those answers will come as you're taking the action. So good. So good. I'm, uh, I'm happy you're on here, Michelle. Uh, I think it will give, maybe it's, it's able to give that little push for, uh, for people that have been thinking about, especially in 2020, right? That the, the pandemic happened, nobody could ever foresee that. Some people were forced even to quit their jobs or to leave their jobs or they were let go. Um, and, and, and especially those people that in, in these times that they need to hear about this and about your incredible journey. Um, now let's talk a little bit about your planner because you know me, we, we talked about this before. I'm all about habits, rituals, right? High performance tracking, and you created this really nifty tool. Um, ma maybe you can show it. What, what did you create Michelle and, and why? Yeah. So it's called get in the habit and it's a 30 day guided journal. And the reason that I created that was for several reasons. One is the more um, research that I did about the most successful habits, journaling is one of the number one thing that's mentioned over and over and over again, along with gratitude. And it seems like such a simple thing, but it's so important in your daily life to make sure that you're writing things down, to make sure that you're practicing gratitude. Um, affirmations are super powerful, all those I am statements, putting you in that positive headspace. And so my problem was I've had journals and I have several and they're blank pages and they continue to be blank pages because I just, what well, I don't know, I'm going to sit down and write what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and not everybody struggles with that. People can sit down and write pages and pages in their journal every day. And, but that wasn't me. So I thought, well, what about people more like me who just don't know what to write? 
or, you know, don't have yeah. that idea in their head. Oh, what should I, where should I start? Uh -huh. So I published this journal and it's, I call it guided because on every day you get two pages, a morning and an evening, and it prompts you, um, okay, write out your most important tasks for the day. Do you have anything on your schedule that you need to um, get done? And then at the bottom, and this is especially for the morning, let's write out your gratitudes, let's write out your affirmations so that you can get your day started in the most positive headspace that you can do. And then in the evening portion of it, it actually gives you questions to answer to help you evaluate how you felt your day went. And the fun thing about it is when you first evaluate your day, you may put yourself at a five saying, oh, I had the worst day ever. But once you answer these series of questions, it helps you to reevaluate and say, okay, maybe my day wasn't that bad. I did do some really great stuff today because, you know, we don't celebrate often enough the things that we do. And we focus so much on everything that we didn't get done. And um, a lot of times that keeps people up at night too. Yeah. So this journal is going to help you to reevaluate your day and say, okay, you know what? These are really good things that I got done today. So maybe I didn't get everything done, but I did get some things done. And, so, and sometimes I also believe, Michelle, sometimes you wake up and we don't always control our emotions, right? Uh, sometimes you, you tend to seek uh, a purpose or a reason behind the emotion, but emotions are cyclical right just like especially uh, among women they have certain periods it's just biologically determined uh but the same counts for men emotions are sometimes cyclical there's no explanation there's no particular reason why you feel that way so what i like what you just mentioned is that you can start your morning maybe you know not feeling at your best maybe not at that 10 level right when you're ready to go and conquer the day but by intentional actions uh starting in your morning by having routines you're able to significantly improve that day and that's, that's why right. it's so important that you journal again at night 15 minutes or so to have a high level recap because you're actually in control that if you they started out at a lower energy level by by focusing and being intentional on on certain tasks or certain rituals you can actually bring yourself to a to a higher state so i, I love that you included the evening there be, because you you want to understand what happened in that process it's not just the morning that determines your day you want to understand that whole evolution from morning to evening and then reflect back so so you can approve upon that on the day the days to follow Absolutely. And then remember, too, is our lives are all about the, our perception, how we see things. And our perception of our reality is not always the right thing. And so if we go come into our evenings with the perception that we had a really bad day, maybe if you're prompted to look back a little bit deeper, it can change your perception of the whole day and then change your emotions and your mood. So yeah. um, it's really powerful. Hey, Michelle, so you said this uh, journal is uh, published. Uh, where where can people find that journal? It's on Amazon. It's on um, Amazon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Just, just look up Get in the Habit. It comes right up in the yeah. <laughs> And um, why did you decide to publish a 30-day journal? I'm very curious. Why, why 30 days? Well, I felt that, you know, at least that would get you through a month of you know getting into the habit because habits of course takes between 21 to 60 to 90 days depending on the habit that you're trying to build and so i felt that the 30 days was a good time to get somebody once they start doing it if they do it every single day the 30 days was a good time to get you into the habit of journaling and then should you choose to continue to use the book because you like the format of it or maybe then move on to those blank journals or something else where you can just write out more freely um, I just wanted to get people into that habit of getting started with journaling. And I felt that this was a good, we could call it our preschooler journal, you know, it's a yeah. good, good book to get someone started in the habit of doing it. Absolutely. And, and I love that you said that because these are the actual life lessons that school systems don't teach us. The parents, our parents, they don't teach us, but these are the life 
habits that actually uh, you mentioned control earlier, right? Like journaling, reflecting, tracking, right? These are some, and, and then a whole bunch of other things, but these are the actual life habits that I believe personally that everybody should be equipped with to force their own path, right? Wherever that destination, uh, what, whatever it means to them. But these are the habits that keep you consistent. Mm -hmm. So I think you, you created a phenomenal tool, very powerful. Um, and I, if, if it's okay with you, we have a few questions of the audience. So, so I'm just gonna drop a few questions uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and let me know what you think about them. So okay. people are actually wondering, since we talked about the habits and, and, and you, know, you, you created the guided planner. So people are wondering, Christiane is asking, what are your morning habits? How does Michelle Quinn start her day? And, and what are maybe, is it, is it one thing? Is it a, a, a sequence of things that you do? And is it always the same thing every day? So, yeah, so I definitely teach that you have to respect your morning routine. And um, one of the things that I do is I do, I wake up in gratitude and I say, you know, thank you for this, you know, beautiful day. And um, thank you for allowing me to wake up. And I'm grateful for, you know, and I have a list of things that I that I just before I even get out of bed in the morning, and I, I list out those things that I'm grateful for. Um, I love affirmations. So I do my I am statements, I am powerful, I'm a inspiring business person. I am you making are inspiring, Michelle. Okay. You are. <laughs> you see your affirmation is coming through. You're manifesting it. That's right. That's right. Um, so, you know, just to put myself in that positive headspace again, and I try really hard not to look at my phone first thing in the morning. And I yeah. always recommend that because imagine you wake up and you're great. You like you've done your affirmations, you do your gratitudes. And then the next thing you do is pick up that phone and there's an email that, oh, you forgot to pay a bill and now you're getting a late notice. So what do you think that does to your attitude for the rest yeah, of the day? Yeah, there's you know, it's, something it's, similar. Absolutely. So we're so addicted to these notifications and these emails and everything else on our phones because we expect that there might be something exciting there or something positive or something that's going to make our day better. And, but just the opposite can happen. Yeah. And so when you allow that first thing in the morning to affect your mood, it's going to affect your mood for the rest of the day. So try not to pick up that phone first thing, if you can at all. I know some people yeah. don't have to based on their business. They have a hard time not doing that. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And guys, um, I, I'm 100% uh, on board with this. It's, it's something that I, I am preaching about. That cell phone, it's, it's, it's distraction. Uh, the majority of the media, the information that we process on a daily basis, not just from your own circles, but from the news. Think about the news. The majority is all negative. So, Michelle, I, I have a concept. I call this priming, priming your mind. How, like, what, what is your, what is your concept? Because there's obviously the reason why you do the morning ritual is to put yourself in a higher state, right? In a higher uh, frequency, in a yeah. higher level of energy. Like, do you, do you have a concept for that? How, how, how do you call that? Wow. I don't know. I don't really have, I just call it my positivity. <laughs> like just putting yourself in that positive mindset. It's, it's just so important to and, make and Do you think better. that that is part of the control that you talked about earlier? Like following those routines, you're really controlling how you go into the morning, controlling your state of mind and how you feel. Yes. I mean, absolutely. And, and people just don't realize that they, they, you control your emotions by how you think about things, by how you're triggered about certain things that happen during the day. So you can either change that habit by one, avoiding those things, or two, changing how you think, understanding what's triggering you, and then changing your thought process behind that. Yeah. And it's, it's, and people that, well, you can't just do that. Well, yeah, you can. Because yes, you I, can. I did it the other day, personally. I had something that triggered me. And I was at a party um, with, with some people. And there was something there that triggered me. And I said, you know what? 
I'm not going to allow this to affect my mood. I'm not going to allow this to trigger me any longer. And within a couple minutes, I was back to, you know, my regular self and I wasn't thinking about it. But if you allow yourself to continue to run that scenario through your head over and over and over and over again, it's going to consume you. And that's what puts you in these moods that you get into. Yeah. So you have all control over that. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Michelle, I, I wanted to propose, are you, are you open for some rapid fire questions? I, I, I shoot questions at you and you just say a, a sound yes or a sound no. Are you okay. up to that? Sure. Sure. Okay. Question number one, is happiness a choice? Yes. Is negativity a choice? Yes. Can we control our state of mind? Yes. If the day starts out negative, can you turn it around and turn it into a positive? Yes. Does our thought have an impact on our results? Yes, absolutely. Can we change our life and attract the things into our life by thinking positively? Yes. Beautiful. And the last one, Michelle, can we develop a vision and start manifesting the, the desires and the dreams that we all carry with us, even from childhood on? Can, can we start manifesting them into our life by the power of your thinking? Yes. As long as you have the faith behind it. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for playing along. I, I, I always love to do some rapid fire questions, but I love those questions. <laughs> and, 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 and thank you. It's too many yeses, right? Too many yeses. And what it comes down to guys, um, you are in control of your feet. Like you are in control of your life by controlling your thinking and Therefore, high performance or, or even being in control of your day is just a matter of having a few tools in your toolbox, like uh, Michelle's planner. It's a tool, right? It's a simple tool that you can use every day to set you up for success. Um, being aware, um, having awareness of those thoughts whenever they enter your mind, instead of acting on them, just have awareness and then switch them, turn them around. Now, Michelle, can you give us a couple of examples? Because life is not always perfect. You know that. I know that. I think everybody, especially on the internet age, you know, social media, it, it all seems to be so perfect, especially now with COVID, when, when everybody joined the internet, right? There's all these beautiful things, but we know that life is not always perfect. Um, what are some, of, some examples that, that you found yourself in a situation, uh, could be intentional or maybe it just, you know, it, it was, you were just not feeling good, but what are some of the, um, the processes that you followed to then flip around and, and be in control of the outcome, right? Like you find yourself in that unhappy demotivated place. And I think that happens to all of us, but then what do you do? to flip it around and still be in control to have a productive day? So two, two things actually. One is um, I read, a, I love reading books. So I'm, I, I listen to a lot of audios too, but um, I read a book by Mel Robbins called The Five Second Rule. And oh. that actually had a huge impact on me. Um, being able to do that countdown, the five, four, three, two, one, to change like, your like state. Nah, yes. Yes, yes. A, a huge impact for me. And then um, the other thing that I do is, um, now I've lost my train of thought because I was thinking about that book. <laughs> um, Counting backwards in, in, in changing like a negative into a positive or vice versa, like how, how are you able to flip things around with the power of your thinking? So if you feel yourself going down that, that, okay, so like, let's use the example of I was, I was afraid to fly, right? And every time I'd fly somewhere, I would get the butterflies in my stomach and just start feeling really yucky and um, nervous and everything else. So one of the things I started doing, and don't think I'm crazy, but as soon as I started feeling those thoughts come into my head, I would start singing in my mind the song from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean because that's oh. like, that like one of, you know, Disney's like one of our favorite places. And every time I go on their ride and you hear the song, yo, ho, ho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I, you know, because it puts me in a happy place, right? So I'm taking my thoughts of anxiety and I'm acknowledging them because you can't just push them aside because yeah. they'll keep coming back more, yeah. but I'm acknowledging them. And then I'm, I'm putting myself in a more happy space, like a, a memory somewhere that I've been previously that just can change your vibration and your, how you're thinking. And it, helps to stop your process of, of that negative thought pattern and helps to put something in that has made you happy in your past. It could be um, a time you had with one of your kids. It could be somewhere you've been, um, you know, if you've ever been to uh, Hawaii or Maui, you know, and you're, yeah. you're thinking about standing on that beach and looking out at that beautiful blue ocean, it, whatever it is, like find an anchor point something that's going to bring back that feeling of happiness and replace those negative thoughts with that anchor point, like with that thing of happiness. And it can really change your, your vibrations and how you're feeling. And don't worry about a thing, Michelle, uh, because it's ultimately the crazy ones <laughs> in the world, right? Exactly. <laughs> but it's incredible because it's it's yet it's another tool, however you want to call it, right? An, an, an anchor point, a, a, a memory to bring you back into a different state of mind. Uh, I like to call it tools because it's no more than that. You have your mind and then there's your, your true self. So whenever those thoughts enter your mind because it's really the thoughts that will if if untrained right an untrained mind will act upon those thoughts so if your thoughts are negative you tend to act negative and and to me it sounds like that is what you want to control you want to control acting on the negative thinking so if thoughts enter your mind you have a tool like singing singing a little song to yourself or you bring your back to a positive space which allows you to act differently would you say that's that's an accurate description of how thoughts and, and mental programming and habits work? Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, it's, you know, I had to do that for a few flights, but once I realized that, then, I mean, like I have no problem now getting on an airplane. I don't even think twice about it. So it took me a few times of, of traveling and flying and then, Eventually, I was just like, okay, I'm not even thinking about it. Like those, those negative thoughts weren't even coming in my mind. Amazing. So. Um, Michelle, I, I have one more question. Um, there's a lot of people always ask me because life consists of a series, series, many, many different type of little habits. Even brushing, a t brushing your teeth in the morning and at night, it's a habit, right? Mm -hmm. Everything we do, our behavior is controlled by habits. Now... You said that you started studying uh, the habits of successful people, and 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 I I enjoy that because I did the same thing when I got started many years ago with my coaching practice. Uh, I started studying successful people and their habits. I wanted to understand what is it that they do that brings them so much energy that put them in a certain state. Um, so how would you say? we have many different habits that if if you stack them on top of each other, ultimately they become part of you, right? I always call it like at, at one point stacking the rocks and it will spill over, right? Mm -hmm. Either good or bad. Exactly. So how would you go about if, if you're currently, if you can give advice to entrepreneurs watching, knowing that they may have certain habits that are not serving them so well, they, they're not, part of high performance right it, it may be even stopping them but how would you go about if if there's more habits that you need to to master and learn can you do that all in the same time or do you recommend to practice one habit at the time until you master them what is the process so the best thing and the best advice that i can give and this goes with habits or anything else that you're doing is focus so you really want to focus on one thing because if you go and you try to change your entire life all at once, you're setting yourself up for failure. So you have to really focus on one thing at a time and take small steps, but, and maybe take small action steps every single day. It's like, you know, people go on a diet and immediately they're going to, they say, I'm going to stop eating sugar altogether and I'm going to just completely. And they think that in one day, 
they're going to completely change their diet. And they're really setting themselves up for failure in the long term because now you're you're depriving yourself of something that you've always loved in the past and um it can't you know it can't be done in the long run so the best thing that i can recommend is focus on one goal focus on one goal of one habit that you want to change and then you know i don't know if you understand the habit loop so you've got your you've got your trigger you have the action and then you have the reward mm -hmm. so whatever habit that you're working to um, change you first of all have to understand what's the trigger that's causing you to do this habit it's causing you to do this action and what reward are you getting by it so once you understand that then you can exchange that action for the old thing that's not serving you any longer and put in the new thing and do that focus and focus on that one thing and start taking small actions every single day and then do that for you know 30 days 20 days however long it takes to really get that ingrained and then you can move on to the next thing but definitely you know i and i always tell my coaching clients that you know multitasking doesn't work mm -hmm. and so it goes with anything that you do so you really need to focus on one thing get that mastered get that figured out and then you can move on to the next thing once you have success with the first. So big steps and small changes. I hope you heard that, right? There you have it. Multitasking does not work. Not Michelle work. said it, I'm saying it, focus on the one thing until you master it and do the second, right? So if you're currently that person that thinks that you need to do and, and spread your attention and your energy among all these things that you do on a daily basis, it's not effective. High performance comes from focusing on the one thing. Um, that, that's, that's a common, and I'm sure you get that all the time, Michelle, as well. That's a common thing that people that tend to do everything, they got a whole bunch of nothing because they spread themselves too thin. Um, I have a very interesting question coming up here, Michelle, and, uh, and, and then uh, we're going to transition as we're coming to a close. But... Um, Whenever you coach with uh, with your students, do you talk about abundance, about wealth, about money? And, and what is the most common limiting belief about creating abundance and wealth into your life? So I do talk about abundance. And, um, you know, when I when I coach my students, we do a vision board. But then we also do an appreciation board, like things that you've already got in your life. So that's really super important. But I think that the most, I don't really go into money mindset and um, it's, but it's something that I'm fascinated by because so many people have such a negative money mindset, whether they realize it or not. And they're actually blocking themselves from making money because of that mindset. And, um, you know, the most important thing is definitely, you know, money is not evil and, if you change the mindset, there's plenty to go around for everyone, yeah. right? So even though this person might be making a couple million dollars a year and this person's only making 20,000, 30,000, that millionaire did not take that money from that person. There's plenty to go around. And if you put yourself into the mindset that, I'm going to earn this money because it gives me the ability to have the freedom to do the things that I want to do. And whether that's spend more time with your family, whether that's helping other people. I mean, imagine the people that are, you know, multimillionaires or millionaires, typically they're employing others. So you're opening up opportunities for other people by making yourself abundant. And by bringing in that that income and that money, that gives you the power and the ability to then go out and make other impacts to other people in the world. And so if you go into it with that mindset that, you know, just because I'm making all this money, I'm not taking it from someone else. In fact, I'm providing opportunities for others because I have this money. You know, I'm spending it in someone else's restaurant or someone's store. I'm helping that restaurant and that store to thrive. I'm, you know, I'm hiring a VA or I'm hiring someone else to work in my business now because I can't handle it all 
or I'm, you know, I'm too busy. Um, so the idea of your money mindset, you're either going to block that from, you're going to block yourself from success because you don't believe that money is a good thing, or you're going to excel because you believe that when you have that money, then you have the freedom to be able to go out and impact the world in other ways. Incredible, Michelle. Thank you so much for sharing. And I'm, I'm sure that this answer, that, uh, that question coming from Christiana and, and probably beyond, right? It's the law of circulation, guys. It's You have the ability to change your thinking, whether it's about money, whether it's about your health, whether it's about the political, economical landscape that we currently live in, and whether it's about the pandemic, right? You have a choice, you approach it negatively, which you're most likely blocking yourself up from uh, from opportunity. But if you change your thinking and you just change that conversation, right, things start to circulate again. Things start to naturally come to you because, like Michelle mentioned, there's plenty to go around, whether it's food, whether it's money, whether it's work whether it's friends or relationships, there's plenty to go around and all it takes is to change your thinking. Um, I, I think that's a very, very powerful way um, to, 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 to finish this interview today, uh, Michelle. And um, before, before um, we're gonna, we come to a close, I, I know you brought something exciting today, right? We, we always, we're here to empower our community, to give back, right? To send the elevator down and to provide tremendous resources and opportunities as we learn from, from the journeys from, from yourself and all the amazing guests that we had on the show uh, on the Thursdays. Michelle, what, what did you bring for us uh, to the community? What, like, I know we're doing a raffle, Yes. So I have five copies of my journal, which I will send out to whomever wins the raffle. Yeah, can, can we see one more, one more time? What is the title? Get in the habit, guys. A 30-day guided journal by Michelle, published, written by Michelle Gwynn. Currently available on Amazon, uh, published, but giving away five copies today. And Michelle, how, how, how can we get a hold of that? Like, how do we, how do we get those five copies over to the community? Um, you, however you're going to do this and decide who is going to get a copy. If you just send me their addresses, I'll get to the post office and mail them out. Amazing. And I know that we discuss one more thing, right, Michelle, because you're, you have a phenomenal coaching business and, and you're here to empower others. And I think that's such a noble cause that that's why I do what I do, because I love to empower people. And, and we talked about that before. Um, and, and I think this is very, very valuable. Uh, Michelle, you also said that the person right on the show, we pick one person that get a chance, an opportunity to speak to you. 30 minutes in a power breakthrough session. What is it some of the things that you will be discussing on that session? So we go into, you know, we go into where you are, what your current habits are, what you're struggling with. And then I will talk with you and see how we can break through those habits. Sometimes it's a mindset thing. Sometimes it's a time management thing. Sometimes it's a, a technology thing. I'm a techno geek too. So I love technology. So I love to help with that as well. Um, so we determine, you know, what it is, what area it is that you need the most help with. And then we'll, we'll talk through it and see, um, how I can help you with it. Incredible. Michelle, thank you so much for providing, you know, amazing value. Uh, I, I know how valuable this is. This is, this is just creating clarity and, and, and sometimes it just has to be one, one thing that make the rest, um, click right sometimes it's just this one piece of clarity that you're creating in your life that make all the rest click so i know how powerful this is and i really appreciate you and your time and for sharing your story with us um michelle can you before we go can you close us out with one piece of advice for the people currently listening right they we we talked about the habits we talked about your journey but for the people that are currently thinking of entrepreneurship, to, to be in the business for themselves, to live their purpose, or even for the people that are in business today, but know that they are not meeting their full potential. What would you say to them? I would say, you know, just make the decision 
decide to do it and take action. That's you don't think on it too long. If you know, once you've thought about it, then it's most likely gone out of your head. But if you have that intuition and that instinct that this is the right thing for you, make that decision. It's going to be scary. And that's okay, because you can't live your entire life in your comfort zone, because your comfort zone is not too comfortable, you'll realize. So <laughs> make that decision and go for it. And then you can't, but you can't just make decisions. You've got to take action. So figure out what needs to be done and take daily action steps and it's going to come to you. And whatever you need, whatever you need is going to come to you. So, so good guys. I, I got, I got chicken pox right here. Yeah. So powerful. Michelle, thank you so much. We appreciate you. We appreciate your story. We love Patrick, your, your phenomenal husband. Um, and, and we're going to be looking out for you, follow your journey, because we know that you're, you're in the process of becoming really big and, and amplify You're a catalyst, right? You're a catalyst of helping other people break through these paradigms and, and fulfill their lives and live their purpose. So we appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on guys. And, uh, for our viewers tune in with us next week. If you find value in this interview today, please pay it forward by inviting somebody to the show, tagging somebody that needs to hear about this and follow Michelle, right? Get in touch with Michelle, follow her because she, she has a phenomenal powerhouse and we're gonna see so much more uh, throughout this year and the years to come. So leave Michelle a review. If you got value out of this, we would love to hear from you. And for now, I will hope to see you on the next call. Have a phenomenal day, guys. And uh, Michelle, I appreciate you. And hopefully we can do this again. Yes, I would love to. Thank you so much. All right, Michelle, have a great day. And we'll see each other soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.